Welcome to Fit Farm, a show dedicated to creating a better life through fitness and the grappling arts. I'm Joseph Aronson. I'm Jackie Baker. It's time to get jacked. What's up, everybody? I am here with Ryan Rogers. Ryan, how are you doing today? Doing well. Very well. Happy to be here. Forgot to mention, ex-bodybuilder from the... Uh, was that a Rockford area, or where was that? Yeah, that was a Kevin Noble show. Okay, nice, dude. And, and uh, as of right now, no plans to go back to that, right? No, it took me five months to get ready for it. It took me two hours to really realize what that's all about. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, not that lifestyle, right? Subjective. Yeah, that's fair. all I got to say. Subjective. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's a tough lifestyle, man. I I don't think I could uh could deal with someone telling me I don't look good enough. You know, it's yeah. like you worked that hard for it. It's like, dude, I look good enough. I don't care what you say, right? You have to have that attitude. If mm-hmm. you don't, then it, it'll depress you sometimes, or most of the time, the answer you will get. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, uh, sorry, we went off on a tangent there, getting ahead of ourselves, but uh, if you could give just the listeners a little bit of a background about yourself, like uh, starting with maybe where you're from and kind of what it was like growing up in that area, things like that. Sure. Uh, well, I grew up in Belvedere, about three miles out, um, out off of Pearl Street. Okay. Uh, grew up on a farm, horses, dogs, cats. Um, I had... I had some I had a fun ex- some fun experiences out there you know uh, we had golf carts stuff like that you know I got to, I got to have fun yeah the country life that's it's fun man for sure well you get to do what you want you get the freedom yeah mm-hmm. you do now did you have to help out a lot too on the farm I'm guessing it was like a farm well, yeah matter. yeah absolutely there uh, there was animals that needed to be fed and uh, it was quite the experience yeah you know? there's something about that too if you if you grow up around like helping doing real like adult type chores when you're a child it's going to build some serious strength right i mean you oh. probably naturally just strong like whenever I, i'm not going to get too far ahead of us but whenever you did get into lifting you're probably already had a strong foundation right oh yeah absolutely it built it, it built character mm-hmm. and you were talking about physical strength here it builds mental strength too at uh we moved to that farm when i was four years old and we moved off about 14 years old i do remember vaguely carrying five gallon buckets in between my legs trying to carry it over <laughs> by the time i left there i can lift them pretty much up the shoulder height on either side nice dude. so yeah farmer strength is a real thing yeah it is it is i mean because that's that's just conditioned in you i mean it's like i mean it's like anyone like they say like wrestlers when they go into different sports they're super competitive too because they're used to that grind yeah same with anyone you know growing up in that kind of lifestyle you're used to just working for for a living you're not you're not being pampered or babied you know so you can no you can take whatever's thrown at you and just hey all right let's get up and deal with it right i mean absolutely absolutely it makes you tough yeah so uh now Where did you, like, as far as school and stuff, were you going to uh, Belvedere schools, public schools, or what what were you doing then? Well, I attended uh, from second to fifth grade. Uh, I attended uh, St. James Catholic School. Okay. Uh, Then from there, I went on to public schools, Belvedere Junior High, then uh, Belvedere South. Okay. Now, I imagine being the, what was the first one again? St. Saint, Saint James. St. Saint James, yeah. right. So that's a Catholic school, right? Mm-hmm. Now coming from, or going to that kind of school, what's that like? Because I imagine there's probably a lot of parents with a lot of money, different, kind of a different lifestyle altogether from a farmer, you know, growing up on a farm versus parents who have the white picket fence and they're, mm-hmm. you know, they're lawyers and things like that. Did you deal with a lot of uh, bullying or anything like that from the adversity or? Well, uh, let me just put it like this. Those years were pretty much bullying. That's all it really was. Uh, to, to not sugarcoat it, it, it was. My father wanted me to go to a Catholic school, and uh, the man was determined. So um, uh, he, made it, he made it available. He made it possible. Uh, he would do things around uh, the Catholic school and Catholic church to help out and stuff like that. And, um, well, 
I'll start off like this. When you've got kids that are going to, that are going there and their parents come from know, lawyers, doctors, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera, and then here you've got this kid, stringy bean pole kid, walking in with Coke bottle glasses, trailer park ponytail down to the middle of my back. <laughs> I have Joe pictures Dirt. to prove it. <laughs> And then I think they were like New Balance shoes oh, with, with with horse shit stuck on the bottom of them. Oh, man. Yeah, you were a target there, but uh, pretty easy target, right? Very easy target. But uh, looking back at it, it's what made me who I am today. I can't, I wouldn't change it for the world if it if it made me who I am today. Mm-hmm. I bet that that helped with a lot of your mental strength right there. Just coming back from that. I mean, at first it probably. As a child, something like that can break you. You know, I mean, you can. It did. There's days that you don't want to go to school. You don't. You just want to stay home, right? I imagine. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, I really didn't want to go to school too much. Yeah. Uh, it, it, that was difficult, and and it, I had some issues with being around people. I was in a little bit of an antisocial kid, which uh, living on a farm made it easy because I had I had animals that accepted me no matter what I looked like, and uh, so that's what I stuck with. I had my go karts, I had my mini bikes out there. Uh, at one time, my father brought home a three-wheeled golf cart with a Harley Davidson engine in it. Oof. That was entertaining. Um, so I had I had that to keep me busy, and I was perfectly fine being by myself. Yeah, content, right? Very content. Own, yeah. But then I had to go through. Um, I had to, I had some counseling. I had to go through some psychology. I had a counselor for many years after that to try to work through the severe anger issues. Uh, that I developed from that. And I've been, to be honest with you, even to this day, still working on those anger issues because um, those times of my life that I had that problem were the major foundation and building blocks to who you are going to be for the rest of your life. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm rewriting a past, I guess you can yeah. say. To, and you can, you can live that over and over and over and over too, you know, something mm-hmm. like that you can – it can grind you away. I mean, it can eat at you for forever if you let it, right? And I mean, some people do. I choose yeah. to not let that happen. Yeah. So, I mean, what did you do back then just to get through the day? Was there something you would tell yourself, like, hey, I'm going to school. These next six hours are going to suck. Or, I mean, you just just go get – just go. I mean. You just go. Yeah. Um, I, I daydreamed a lot. Uh, I, I'm ADD. I've got ADD issues a little bit of ADHD issues there. So um, I wasn't very good at school. You know, (laughs) there goes the teacher running around on the chalkboard, and all of a sudden my mind drifts off into space. So I stayed in La La Land an awful lot. Yeah, you're thinking of (laughs) go-karts, right? Or you're thinking of your chores you got to do when you get home or whatever, right? Anything I can to keep myself busy. Anything to get get your mind off school. (laughs) Especially in math. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Not the greatest at that either. Um, did you did you happen to play any sports when you were younger too, or, or was that not really an option there? Or well, I got into BYB. I was a little bit of a boys' youth baseball, oh, okay. and uh, I remember my one hit. I hit the ball once Ooh. during a game, only once. That was the last. Uh, that was the last season I played. But uh, looking back at it. Uh, it was a start. It, yeah. it, it broke me into uh, in, into sports, and then um, I did I did a little bit of karate mm-hmm. just for something. But really, when I was 14 years old, when I was 14 years old, was when, my first time. It was my birthday. I spent it in the Belvedere YMCA gym, mm-hmm. and it's uh, to tie in something right there. You know, when you were picked on in school, uh, growing up, in a kid's mind. Mm-hmm. they will find something that they can hold on to as as safety. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were talking about um, preparing yourself. Yeah, I was one of the biggest Schwarzenegger, Van Damme, um, Sylvester Stallone fans mm-hmm. out there. These guys kicked ass in all the in the eighties and nineties. Yep. Oh, I yeah. mean, you had Hard Target, you had Total Recall, all of these. Terminator, and there's one thing Rambo. that they had in common: yeah. they were all big guys. They're all muscular, yeah. and they could kick someone's ass. And yep. I saw that, and I was like, I want to be like them. Yep. So my four, my fourteenth birthday, when I was old enough to go to the gym, I was at the gym. Following actually a coworker of mine, present day coworker of mine around the gym. He was the biggest there. 
I followed him around the gym. Whenever he'd get off a machine, I would try to get on that machine. <laughs> did he and know, or were you just like he eventually him? did? Oh, he okay. took me under his wing. Uh, God bless him for it. But now he's my coworker. Really? You know? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. cool. You want to give him a shout out? You can. Yeah, Joey Laroche, uh, nice. Joey Big Arms. He's uh, <laughs> he's been a good friend and a brother of mine since I was 14 years old, and I'm 32 now. Wow. So he's played a part. So he was kind of uh, was he? I mean, it sounds like the Schwarzeneggers, the Stallones were kind of your inspiration, right? I mean, you see these guys, they're doing well, they're strong, nobody messes with them, right? It's like, that's how I want to look. That's what I, that's what it's going to take, right? I mean... I saw it as, if I can be like them, I won't get picked on, I won't get beat up, I won't get hurt. So did you did you play any uh, any sports with that tour? Were you just, at that point, taking, like, lifting weights, resistance training, very serious, and that was... That was it. I mean, that was. Well, I don't. Uh, serious, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had no idea what I was no doing. No clue, right? No. Uh, my father was a boxer in the Navy, and he got me into boxing when I was 14 years old as well. And uh, it was just, I, I was boxing for maybe about four months. And he. He said that he got me involved with this guy, Jim. Uh, I think it was Jim Baxter of Baxter Boxing off of. Baxter Road. Whoa, perfect. Yeah, exactly. And uh, after four months, I went to States. Oh. After four months from starting, um, they took me to State. And uh, I was second in State. Wow. In silver gloves uh, after starting for three months. So I, I guess I was the golden child there for a little while. That's awesome. I man. remember there was a, there, I was 14 years old, and I reached up, and I – I think I broke a 21-year-old kid's nose in the boxing <laughs> ring oh, with 16-ounce gloves. I mean, you want to talk about uh, you want to talk about something there, and um, I don't know. Maybe that played a part in them saying, "Yeah, he's ready to go." <laughs> right? I, I doubt it. I doubt it because that's just like there's skill involved. But right, one lucky punch, whatever. He's ready to get him out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right, that's <laughs> all it takes sometimes though, to win. I mean, mm-hmm. you just gotta catch him once, right? So uh, did that kind of just fizzle out after a little bit of uh, of the training, the boxing part, or the boxing I was with for a little while there, um, maybe a year or two. But okay. uh, by the age of sixteen, seventeen, I was in the gym for about two to three hours a, a day, yeah. right after school, just getting after it, yeah. lifting or trying to lift, trying to figure out what to do, right? Well, trying to lift. Um, yeah. I, 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 of course. There was a point there. I'd always go after school, but um, um, I dropped out of school at a younger age, so I couldn't go there anymore. I had to start going to the YMCA, okay. which I did actually go back and get my high school diploma. But oh, that's good. A, that's, a, that's a story that might be a little bit more in the conversation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be under uh, like one of your defining moments, too? I mean, we're going to talk about that. We might as well start getting into some of the juicy stories. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, here's your uh, here's your defining moment. When you're, um, I'd say, 18 years old, you have no high school diploma, you you dropped out. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you've just had enough learning issues that you just couldn't seem to catch the break that you were hoping for. Mm-hmm. And uh, you couldn't get the help that you needed. And so you just gave up. You know, okay. you, you, you're 18 years old. You just had enough. You give up. And I remember working at just this dirty old plant, I think it was Central Rubber, off of Jackson Street in Belvedere. And it's 130, 140 degrees in this place Always. on a hot summer day. Because yeah. oh, yeah. you're working around 300, 400 degree presses. Yeah. And most of the people there didn't speak good English at all. And, um, you know, I, I'm just, I've got burn marks all over my arms from trying to reach in these presses and pulling these parts out. And I said to myself, this is your life. Yeah. Your choices that you made, this is your outcome. Man. And you need to do something about it. I got sick and tired of it. I did not want to work in that place for the rest of my life. There Can were guys imagine? there that had 30 yeah. years there, and they looked like shit, breathing in all those fumes. Oh. Carcinogenics. They're probably so unhealthy. They So unhealthy. Yeah. I decided to change it. I now I went back to Belvedere High School and asked them if I can if I can go back, and their answer was no because I would have to I would graduate over the age of 21 years old. Mm-hmm. They weren't having that. Well, um, they told me to just get a GED, but I didn't want a GED. So with a little bit of help, my I and my parents 
uh, found a homeschooling class uh, oh. called American School out of Racine, Illinois, and I became my own teacher. I mean, that lit a fire under my ass enough where I became my own teacher, and I graduated after the age of 21 years old with a high school diploma, and I graduated <laughs> with honors. Nice. See, I mean, in the GED, for anybody that doesn't know, that just stands for good enough degree, right? Yeah, good enough degree is right. Well, <laughs> with a diploma, is, yeah, that's where yeah, it's at. Right? I don't live a good enough that's, life. Dude, that's awesome, man. So then what did you do after that? You're like, did you, did, had you already quit the job when you started going back to school or were you still working to help pay for it or? I was working full time and doing it. Wow. You know, I was, I was, I had my hands full. Yeah. And then after, I mean, I imagine after you got the, the diploma, you probably were out on the hunt for something better. Yeah. Well, you know what the funny thing about it was, is, yeah, I was working a full time job there, but I was also making a little money on the side. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I was a little bit of a troubling kid sure. growing up there. There was, uh, there was a little. Uh, I, I sold things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> items <laughs> and did things and. Uh, um, so there is that past right there. there yeah. There is a bit. There was a drug past there. Yeah. Um, a drug and alcohol past there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that that all went too. Oh, that all man. that all went too. When you got it, when you just when you finished the school and everything, you're like, I got it. You just got it all together. I mean, it doesn't just happen no. at, all at once. But you know what I mean. It, it started to work its way to better days obviously i'm guessing or... yeah yeah i'd say definitely better days um i was working at elderly specialty metals at that point working 12 hour days Oof. and uh yeah, i remember 4 a uh, 4 p.m to 4 a.m that's terrible uh, yeah it? yeah if you want to have some horrible hours let's pick those hours because <laughs> god forbid a 7p to 7a or a 7a to 7p i know oh right? no we're gonna we're gonna really screw you up yeah four to four who does that so I was I was making like thirteen dollars an hour there, and uh, which is good back then. Which too. was good back then, especially but for then, the age, you know, early twenties. Yeah, well, right? Or was it mid twenties? Oh, I was twenty one. Yeah, early yeah, early twenty. That's and then uh, after I turned twenty one years old, um, I actually got a job. Here I am thinking, here's my high school diploma working for me. Um, I went to school for, or I'm sorry, not went to school for I. Started working concrete for Lake County 152. Oh, okay. Uh, so union. Yeah. yeah, union. And I was making some really good money there. But the eh, everything started to go to hell in 2008 and two, or 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people were losing their jobs. They told me that uh, you and about... 30, 40% of the workforce, the bottom workforce that uh, yeah, we employ. Yeah, you're are, new, dude. We, we got guys that have been here 30 years. We got to yeah. keep them working. You got to go, yep. right? Yep. So uh, I lost everything there, basically. And, uh, and you were probably pretty invested in that, too, I imagine. Like yeah. you, you had, when you get a job like that at that age, like you think, I made it. I got my career. I finally settled into what I can, I can retire from here, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, in a sense, put all your eggs in one basket, right? I mean, Pretty much, and I'm just thankfully, uh, I'm thankful that I didn't bury myself in debt. Because when you're 21 years old, just got high school diploma, and you're making 33 over 33 dollars an hour, get that new you car, buy everything, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, everything, yeah, you get the new pickup, get the new motorcycle, get oh, the new house. I, I had a, <laughs> I had a bike picked out. <laughs> oh, shoot. well, you got a bike now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, are, are you still are you still doing concrete or what are you doing now? No, uh, I work in uh, in the maintenance department oh, for nice. the Illinois Tollway. I've been oh, there for okay. over nine yeah. years. Nice, yeah. dude. I actually got that job in 2008 when uh, everything was still falling apart. I was one of the lucky ones. I'm uh, God really blessed me with that one. I was able to get a good job when everything was falling apart. Yeah, dude, that's so, awesome. And that is my career. Yeah, and, and that's a state job, right? Considered a state job. Yeah, yeah. So that's, absolutely. Hopefully, that's not going anywhere. I mean, it, it would take a lot for that to go somewhere, right? Yeah, especially considering that uh, we're paid off of the tolls, not by taxes. So, mm -hmm. and so maintenance is like so people know. I don't think you're talking about building maintenance. You're talking about road maintenance, right? Road maintenance, pour yeah. concrete, lay asphalt when needed, mm -hmm. uh, pothole repair, mm -hmm. uh, cutting grass. Uh, we do accident management. 
Oh. So, you know, we we do deal with accidents. We have a motor state program that uh, assists patrons out there. Um, you know, you got to have something. You, mm-hmm. you have to have something extra. Yes. In order to, you know, pay or to, to charge yeah. what people pay out there to travel that road. Yep. So you notice there's not a lot of debris. There's not a lot of dead animals out there. Everything's nah, pretty yeah. much cleaned up. Not a if lot the, of potholes like the city. You no, know, right? and uh, if the ro- if there's if there are roads that are open in a heavy blizzard, uh, it's us. Yeah, <laughs> you might not be able to get to us, and you might not be able to get off if you're on it. Mm-hmm. But it will be it, it will be open. Yeah, I got a buddy that works for the Snowbirds, so that's kind of the same thing, right? Or is that intertwined with you, or no? No. no okay. Uh, IDOT's a completely oh, that's different. IDOT. Yeah, you're right. The tollway is different from IDOT. Never completely mind. different. We so, work together in a lot of similarities, however, um, different entities. Yeah. Okay. That's cool, though, man. And and now those are more regular hours too, right? I mean, generally speaking, they're not. 4P to 4A anyways. <laughs> do you still, get, do you still <laughs> well, get some crazy times too? Yeah, all well, my days off are Thursday, Fridays right now, but I'm, <laughs> I'm at least I get, uh, I'm 7 to 3, but our plow hours are different. can be changed four hours past oh, yeah, plow, or four yeah. hours before. Uh, and the, But we do have a 3 to 11 shift. We do have 11 to 7 shift. Oh, okay, so you do have mm-hmm. the three shifts then, right, pretty much? Or, or no, 3 to 11 11 to, yeah, seven yeah, so and you, then, yeah. then a seven to three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you'll have all three shifts covered, right? Yes. Okay. But you're, you're lucky enough to have the day shift at least. I mean, there's that, right? Nine years has to buy me something. Yes. Yes. Now if, if, uh, this is, I mean, we're kind of going off on a tangent, but if it does snow, I mean, you're, you're working overtime usually or plowing or are you not so much? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm on call seven days a week. Oh, awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, we're here Thursday on your weekend. This is nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, and the skies are blue. Yeah, crazy, man. I can't believe it's almost 50 degrees out. Oh, I, I haven't worn a jacket all day. I yeah, like it. It's crazy, dude. I wore shorts yesterday. so <laughs> um, Yeah, just got a little excited. Like, I'll wear shorts, whatever. <laughs> so I regretted that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, have you uh, have you seen any crazy accidents out there? Any sights yes. you can't unsee, man? Or is yes, I have. How does that does that change your view on texting and driving? I imagine, or oh, you better believe yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I've seen you know seen bad wrecks. Uh, I was uh, I was ex I'm ex fire department too. I used to oh shoot. Yeah, be so with District Two Fire Department. So yeah, they're um, the first responders, right? When there's an accident, yeah. Well, yeah. we we're the many times the first on scene as well. Yeah, because I'm the, I'm sure on the highway, right? You're well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm 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 on the road when it happens. Yeah, or usually. I'm uh, I'm in the building that is. Five connected minutes, right yeah. to the road yeah. you know meanwhile meanwhile the fire departments are coming from 30 off the road away, yeah sometimes. so yeah many times i'm the first one on i beat them there so oh. many times so yeah i i've i've seen some things and it uh it changes you and um it changes your views mm-hmm. on how the motoring public is I, and you've got some strong opinions trust me i, I have some very strong opinions <laughs> <laughs> and you got to do your best to just keep them in. You're like, mm. <laughs> you have to take everything with stride. Yes. Uh, okay. Remember well, <laughs> the paycheck's important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to lose my job, but man, I really feel strongly about something right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to wait another 20 more years when I can retire. And then I'll tell you. <laughs> right? Exactly. You probably have it written down in a journal somewhere, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, up in my head in between the ears. <laughs> oh yeah. That's not going anywhere. right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, um, going back to what we said about bodybuilding, what, I mean, you're, you're lifting this whole time, right? You've, there, you haven't really taken a solid break from, from the gym. I mean, since, since you started until now even, right? Uh, there... the most I've taken off was a couple of weeks and that was, that was about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So, I mean, up until then it's, it's just a part of your everyday life, right? I mean, it is. Yeah. So, it's part of my routine. Yep. Yeah, and that's the thing people have to understand is if you make it a routine, you make it part of your life, then it's it's much easier than trying to you know get out of it, which you can still find ways to get out of it. I, mean, I still yeah. do. Yeah, but uh, it's it's harder that way, right? If if it's it is it is if you are able to make it a routine, it will carry you through those times that mm-hmm. uh, are more difficult to go. Yeah, and when you're just not feeling it, right? You just oh, well, it's part of my day. I got to do mm-hmm. it, you know. And no matter who you are, rather if you're uh, Schwarzenegger or Phil Heath or any of us, yeah. any of us, we all go through those days where we do not want to show up. Yep. So what what made you want to try uh, competing in bodybuilding? Is there something that 
clicked and you're like, you know what, I want to go wear a banana hammock and stand up there and flex. <laughs> so heaven or what? <laughs> well, get oiled up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll start with this one. I was um, I I was obese. Mm. I was obese. Um, speaking of that tollway life. Oh, sitting on your butt a lot, right? Well, not necessarily sitting on your butt a lot, but you just, you, those days of youth are done. Mm -hmm. Well, they were for me at a point. And uh, I ate a lot, I drank a lot, uh, and then I stopped drinking, but then I kept continued to eat a lot. And uh, without exercise, and uh, I just, I gained a lot of weight. I was 300, I probably started for the toy when I was about 212 pounds, Ooh. and um, I was 308 when Man. I decided to do something about it. And I am, I'm out on my fishing boat, and I catch this 8-pound, 26-inch catfish out of Shabanon Lake. And... Um, I get a picture taken of me on my boat by a friend that I cannot remember who he w which one it was out there fishing with me. But I've got this shaved face. Uh, that, that'll tell you how long ago this was. I have <laughs> this shaved Pete. face. And I've got I've got I got double or and the start of a triple chin underneath me. <laughs> Chinning. <laughs> I've got and I've got the smile on my face. I've got a I've got a Michelin tire as I'm pulling I'm, I'm holding this fish up. And it's pulling my shirt tight on my left or right side. And, oh, and I have this gigantic uh love handle set up across the front <laughs> and um it changed me cuz I gave up I gave up bodybuilding. Uh, right around 18 19 years old. I was like I need I, you know I started working. Sure. I got into some Questionable Should I probably have yeah, some questionable things <laughs> and gave up on the healthy life uh, mm -hmm. just to, to go and find it when I was about 27, 27 years old. Yeah. So this picture changed my life. I looked at it and I said, I got to do something about it. And uh, I just remembering back to what I knew, uh, I got my butt in the gym. And uh, I, I I would say, let's see, okay, my, or my or my calendar days are here. 2013 is when I started. Yeah. Um, I did a solid year of just ballparking it as mm -hmm. far as diet goes. And I, I went down to about, I think, 260 pounds. Yeah, just moving around it mm -hmm. probably helped you know, yeah. a little, right? Just, and then yeah. body, you know, bodybuilding the only way that I knew how. And then I got uh, I got with uh, Dan Stevens of Premier Fitness. And, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was somebody that I looked up to. And, um, you know, he, him and I would talk about competing on body you know him as a competitor uh and uh i got the bug and i decided to try it so um we started in december of 2014 and by may of uh 2015 i was i was ready and i stepped on stage wow well, and i was i stepped on at 203 pounds so even yeah even smaller than before you started gaining right so yeah. that's a hundred pound difference yeah wow Mo more than that more yeah. than that because you gotta imagine that I was able to put on quite a bit of muscle and I I am I will toot my horn horn on this I am genetically gifted mm -hmm. you know anybody who's met me or anybody who's known me for a long period of time will tell you that I'm genetically gifted I'm able to put on muscle very quickly so. I don't know how much weight I lost, yeah. But between gaining muscle and losing fat, from going from 308 to who knows, maybe uh, I could have lost 115, 120 pounds. Yeah. But also gaining muscle while with that, I ended up at 203. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you're what are you like six two six? I'm six foot three. Six, I'm three. 290 right now. Okay. Yeah, but it's not it's not as round as it was before. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's funny. Drop me through a tube, I'm gonna get stuck at the belly button and now I'm gonna get stuck at the titties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's funny because I had someone else tell me the same thing. They looked at a picture and they didn't even recognize themselves. They're like, Man, who is this dude? You know, I'm looking at and sometimes it's like that. You don't see it day after day after day. You're just living your life and you're looking in the mirror and you're like, I put on a few pounds here and there. Then it takes like a, a picture of you from the side where you're like, who's this fat dude? You're like, oh, man, that's me. What? Yeah. You know, I look like that. Then then you're like, I got to do something, right? I mean, that's. Yeah, it, it creeps up on you. Yeah. It creeps up on you. It's like a quarter of a pound a day. You know, yeah. Not even that. For 700 days. No, <laughs> right? Longer I mean, than that. Yeah. <laughs> you I know, mean, and before you know it, you know, it, it just it's just there. Yeah. And it just takes, 
It takes the right lighting. It takes the right picture. It takes the right pair of jeans just to say, what have I done to myself? And yeah. I need to do something about this. Yeah. So what was that like competing, man? I mean, because that was your first time. You only did it once. Mm -hmm. Was it, did it live up to your expectations or was it nothing like you were expecting? Or? Well, I may piss off a few people who absolutely <laughs> love that sport here, but there aren't, there uh, I'm going to tell, tell the truth here. It took me five months to get ready for that competition. It took me two hours to realize what it's about. Mm -hmm. um, it really is. It, it, it's, it is a sport. Some people say it's not a sport. I'll see it as a sport. Yeah. You know, I, I'll, I'm there's a little some, bit biased. There's blood, sweat, and tears, man. You're Absolutely. grinding for sure. Absolutely. But it is a sport built on uh, opinions. Yeah. You know, when when a baseball player knocks that ball out of the park, yep. nobody's going to say that's not a home run. That, yeah, that's a home run, definitely. When, the yeah. M when an MMA fighter knocks another MMA fighter cold clean out, they aren't going to lift that guy up after he swallowed his teeth and say, congratulations, you won. Right. But when three, four, five judges are sitting in front of you and one says to the other, that one up there has a better striation or I think he looks more symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Without pulling out a, a, a you know a measuring uh, tape, yes, and, right. and, and you know, or calipers, it's, it's, right? Or... It's based on opinions, mm -hmm. and you can look so good, and you can, you can. I was almost hospitalized. Yeah, during my be, during uh, my competition prep. Mm -hmm. That's something people don't understand oh. either. Is they think that's the symbol of health, right? You look at a bodybuilder. No, that that is, that is, that is not healthy. That is so far from healthy. No, right? that is not healthy. When yeah. you when you are dieting down that much, mm -hmm. uh, when you're hitting three, four, five percent body fat, you are an anorexic. <laughs> yeah, you're a turd. Muscle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> muscle bound freak. Yeah. You know, and, and you are weak. Yeah, you are mentally unstable because mm -hmm. your body fat is dropping down so low and possibly so drastically mm -hmm. you are eating you know 12 13 1400 calories a day for an over 200 pound body and you are 40 minutes of of cardio before you even have breakfast fasted cardio fasted uh, cardio yeah. and then you're going to work and then you're getting done and then you're going to the gym and working out you know to keep that muscle to tell your brain you cannot take this muscle yeah, from keep, you need to you need to get your energy from somewhere else you and that's how you get the body to get help. that fat to go and then before you go to bed you're burning off your last meal by doing another 20 minutes of fast walking this is my personal experience mm -hmm. and i'll tell you this th these are these are uh, a couple of uh, weird quirks about my com my my competition prep days um i have two of them i got one of those um bowflex m5 <laughs> trainers Side note, worthless. Sure. Broke it in three months. Yeah, I can um, see that. $1,600 piece of machinery, <laughs> broke it in three months. Um, Probably right after the warranty, right, or something? Well, actually, they they – they sent me the parts I had to fix it myself until oh. it would, you know, and I never was able to get the problem fixed. It's just, it's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's not made for, it's probably made for someone not that strong, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But but I um, I kept this cheap coffee maker by my bed, and uh, it would go off three hours, two or th no, it was two hours, two hours before I would uh, get out of bed. So that the coffee would brew, the timer would shut off, and it would cool down enough that I could drink it. Slam it. So right? I would, yes, I would. I would get out of bed and at like 4 in the morning, maybe before I'd have to be at work, sit on the edge of my bed, contemplate doing it or suicide, <laughs> and then drink a half a pot of coffee, chug a half a pot of coffee. Black coffee, too. Black right? coffee. got to be oh, fasted. Oh, yeah. yeah. Black coffee along with, um, oh, I cannot even remember the fat burner I was on. Mm. And then I <laughs> yeah, healthy, I would right? jump on. I, I would watch um, uh, Third Rock from the Sun. That was oh, my thing. I had yeah. to reminisce about it. I would never watch it today. Perhaps that's one of my weird you know, quirks about my brain just going through hell uh <laughs> mental health from the prep but uh that was one of the things i do and another thing was is that two months before i stepped on stage i developed this interesting craving for 
get this seasoning i would eat seasoning so oregano weird. i would i would i would bring it to work and i would eat it just shake it yeah. in your mouth yeah you know the popcorn seasonings they have yeah. like caramel oh yeah oh i'd eat that stuff right in front of people and uh. they'd be like what is wrong with you i'm like i don't know i got a problem <laughs> it's just as good <laughs> but you know what it was is that i was i was losing so much fat so quickly and the brain's made of fat mm-hmm. so there was just uh, so uh, so many chemical imbalances there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, for instance, women lose their periods, you know, because yes. of how bad it messes with your hormones. Well, it messes with men's uh, hormones too. I mean, men lose their periods. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, kidding, I'm, I'm kidding. Years, man. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so it does have to. It messes with the brain. Mm-hmm. And uh, you need those healthy fats, you know. To, yeah, and to your feed healthy your brain fats and, are gone. You're along eating with your carbs. Yeah. Yep. You're, you're eating. You're eating very very mm-hmm. little. Um, so I developed an interest in seasonings. Now, after the competition and I started to to come back to normal, I uh, looked up in the cabinet one day, I was making chicken and I saw my delicious seasonings Mm. and I decided, I can't believe I used to eat these. (laughs) Uh, I decided to try them and (laughs) it was like horrible. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? And the thing was, is I just was never really able to, I, uh, I was in bad shape. It's not fun. I'm not saying that, you know, don't do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get people to not compete. To understand what they're getting into. But right? they need to know, they need to understand that when you look your best, you're at your weakest. You're feeling your absolute worst. worst. You're smiling up there. Mm-hmm. That's a fake smile. Yeah, <laughs> That and, is a fake smile. And that's what I always try to tell people too. Like new clients or something, they see people and they want to look like that. You're like... Just so you know, that's not health. Do you want to be healthy or do you want to look like that? Which mm-hmm. one do you want, right? That's that's nothing. That thing died. Um, <laughs> I don't but, blame it. It's looking yeah, at me. Yeah, right? It's like I'm done. But, uh, I mean, like you're sacrificing one for the other, right? You are. When you get to that extreme. You are. Um, so did you blow up after the after the show? Or, oh, or? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, in order, I, I developed uh, a list of – Foods and places that I will have to eat. <laughs> right, right after, right? And, and I found a way to get them all in there so badly that I ended up at one thirty in the morning throwing up. Oh. <laughs> the next day, I can be on a Saturday. Monday morning at one thirty, uh, I was throwing up. It was, and I might forget a few of these in here. Nope, I don't forget. Um, Stockholm Inn for oh, breakfast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, bu- pancakes, <laughs> my buddy Jay and I went there and... I mean, here I am, still shredded, and orange <laughs> from oh, yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. Orange from the Jersey from the Shore spray. looking, right? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> and I just maxed out. Uh, body not used to it. I was exhausted. I wanted to go see a movie because well, that that's yeah. one of the things I used to do when uh, I was competing is that I would just go to movies a lot and uh, um, just, to, just to kill time because you can't really do too much out. You're not out drinking or anything. No, you can't. Definitely. No, yeah. you can't go out to eat with your friends and stuff like that because, you know, you're just going to put yourself through hell. So I'd just go go there. Yeah. Um, but uh, smelling the popcorn and everything like that, oh. I uh, – I had to go get. I had to go see a movie. I don't remember which one, but I ate a massive um, tub of popcorn, full of butter, right? full of butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Went to Applebee's later on that night. <laughs> had uh, had more food, and then by one thirty in the morning, I was throwing up everywhere. Oh. My body was not used to it because I didn't have a cheat meal for the last six weeks of my mm-hmm. of my prep. And then to, you had five cheat meals in one day, the day after. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, the whole day was a cheat meal. <laughs> yeah, when when Stevens told me that I could, you you can now eat something. Um, <clears throat> it was all Oreos. I had every kind of Oreo mm. that you can you can imagine uh, that I was able to find at the local Walmart. Uh-huh. I had every uh, every kind of Oreo that they made. In my bag, packed in my bag with Reese's, <laughs> ready to go right like, right after the show. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, all right, right after the show. Cool. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't even care if I got a trophy. Let me get this food. Ah, right? Oh, it was it that's was... funny, dude. So now that you're uh, you know you're settled into your full time job and, and you were doing this before too, but how do you find the balance between like work, uh, fitness, and and then eating right too? You know, I mean. Because it is kind of a struggle, you know, to do. Well, 
uh, need to to be honest with you, Joe, I'm uh, I'm failing at those right now. But uh, I'm failing at them not because I don't know how to succeed at those. I'm failing at those simply because I just it's not a priority of mine right now. I still lift. Yep. But uh, I'm I'm not afraid to miss the gym right now. I didn't go yesterday. I had work to do around the house. Yep. I had yard work to do. I wanted to get that done. And um, I, f- I found that to be a better a better time uh, or a better time to do it. Um, as far as eating healthy, uh, I haven't been the greatest at that either. Uh, doesn't mean that I've I'm not going to get back to it. And right. I know how to eat. I'm just hey, I'm enjoying myself yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, I got a beautiful woman at home that I love to death, and I enjoy cooking. I enjoy cooking. You look at my Facebook page. There's all sorts of foods on there that <laughs> I, can I tell enjoy. by looking at you that you like. I well, like to eat. <laughs> you like I food. like to eat. So uh, you know, I enjoy cooking for her and stuff like that. But I will tell you this. I- I'll give you this. Um, no matter what I do, I'm always done by eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. That's when you so shut off. That's when I shut off. I don't care what I'm in the middle of, mm-hmm. unless it's in, unless it's something important outside of the ordinary. I'm done at eight p.m. So I get up at six. I'm at work by seven a.m. I'm done by three p.m. I'm at the gym by three thirty. I'm done by four thirty-five. I come home. I do some meal prepping if I have to, or I just cook dinner. Yep. Um, I will do some yard work if it's light out. That's one of the reason why I didn't go to the gym yesterday because I needed to get my yard work done during the light. Spring's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll have more options later on, gym then yard work mm-hmm. later on. Um, so, but but no matter what, as long as like I don't like shut down the oven with chicken still halfway mm-hmm. cooked in there. Right. I am done by eight o'clock. So you've and got like your designated downtime. I got my right? designated downtime because, um, you know, I have a, a beautiful girlfriend at home that I love to death. And uh, we have a baby dachshund that's five months old. And uh, both of them are a priority over everything else. Yeah. And I have to make time for them. I Now, if I go to bed around 11 o'clock, I got three hours a day that we're able to have dinner together. Um, in front of the TV or at the dinner table, sure. we do both. Yeah. Um, no one's perfect, dude. No one's no <laughs> <laughs> no TV. We're just eat at the table, yeah. right? I mean, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's nice kick your feet up, uh, you know, kick up on the couch and eat too. Whatever, yeah, right? get yeah. that dumb look on your face because your brain is completely shut off. <laughs> but that's it. You're still checked out, you know. Uh, you're yeah, just, yeah. You're still checked out, and so that's very important to be able to have that time to to spend together and uh and you know sometimes we just spend the night talking yeah and, that's uh, awesome that's that's one reason why i like doing this with jackie because sometimes if we don't get our time you know to talk or whatever because mm-hmm. with the baby or this or that well at least we get our time to talk here you know and that's that's very important you know mm-hmm. i completely understand you have to put your kids mm-hmm. uh kids first but there has to be a point and i know i'm gonna get that well you're not a you're not a father yet yeah. no i'm not a father yet however i've seen enough failures and i've seen enough successes uh and i guess i've got the type of mind where i'm able to pick out patterns oh yeah where i can see patterns of healthy relationships between parents and the which trickle down into the relationships with their kids that if you don't put a little bit of your relationship with um you know with your significant other mm-hmm. first get that date night in there get yep. that get that time in together however you got to do it we get a guaranteed sitter at least once a week sometimes twice and we're together the whole day you know it's like we got to do something you know? yeah yep, so. you have to build that strong relationship because on that foundation your children uh sit and, yeah. uh, and they're their, their foundations, them, yeah. their yeah. relations. And, you know, uh, parents are God mm-hmm. uh, in the child's eye. Yep. They idol you. They they are exactly, they they want to be mm-hmm. you. So yes. they want to be you if you're, if you're hurting your significant other. They want to be you if you're violent. They want to be you if you're the worst person in the world. Yeah. They want to be you if you're a serial killer. Yep. You know, so it's very, and those are, and during that time that you are a God to them, those are the building blocks, the major foundations of who they mm-hmm. are going to be for the rest of their life. So it's very important to uh, nurture that relationship. So, yes, uh, getting back to it, I shut down at 8 p.m. 
mm-hmm. uh, latest at 8 p.m. to spend time with my loved ones, my family. The phone, for the most part, gets shut off. Yep. Put on and, silent. And I am theirs. That's actually really smart, though, and that's a perfect way, I'd say, to balance it. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you're giving your full attention to work. You're giving your attention to everything else. But at the end of the day, you need to focus on your relationships, right? Yes. And, and I think there's, you know, it's for people that are maybe single, not in a good relationship, it, you know, there's there's a lot to be said about having a supportive, significant other around you. Someone with similar goals or similar lifestyle mm-hmm. can actually help you in your journey, right? I mean, absolutely. You, your your girlfriend works out all the time too, right? She's in exercise or she, hit or miss now. Or? She is a beast yeah in the gym see? it's uh it's impressive <laughs> see and and that's huge right for a couple that if you have mm-hmm. interests like that you know she'll understand i don't know were you guys together when you did the show or not then no no we okay. got together um we started talking in uh the end of march and uh um Almost we a have year? We no, this is back in sixteen. Oh, two years, so yeah, almost two years, yeah. Um, and then April, I, I, we we say April seventeenth, okay, uh, two thousand sixteen is our. We'll say the date that we really that we started dating, even though we knew ourselves before that. Um, and that was that was me. I'll I'll, I'll tell everybody this. <laughs> She yeah, chased me down. <laughs> she chased me down. You know, typically the guy mm-hmm. is uh, the one that does the chasing. Uh, I was going through a hard time in my life, and uh, she had to chase me down. Mm-hmm. She had to say, hey, I like you. I love you. I want to get to know you. Mm-hmm. I don't want – I'm not here for the wrong reasons. Right. Notice me. And I noticed her. It didn't yeah. take long to notice her. Well, there's I, a lot of people that want to play games now, too. The dating uh, world, I don't even want to get too deep into it, but the dating world right now is a disaster. <laughs> it is. It's, well, divorce is the new breakup. Yeah, dude. Well, let's just get married. And if it doesn't work out, there's always divorce. Exactly. Yeah. And side chicks. <laughs> yes. Side chicks. It's cool to have side chicks. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. No, that's <laughs> if 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 anything at all. Besides the fact that I don't I don't respect that. I think it's cool. But, well, neither do I. But besides that, who would want those extra headaches, right? <laughs> I mean, well, who you would? Enough, yeah, you got enough responsibilities trying to make one person happy. Yeah. How are you gonna? How do you think you're gonna make two, three? You know, all these other people happy. And how and how and how stressful it's got to be keeping that life separate from the other one. You know, I mean, you're like coveting your phone. Uh-huh. My my girlfriend has my my passwords oh yeah Mine she's too. more than welcome yep. she she grabs my phone and you know she she gets the camera out of it and takes a picture of you takes right there pictures, yeah takes i i don't care yep i i have nothing to hide i love her i'm devoted to her that's it yep that's how it should that's be it. but it, that's it, how it should be but nope. it's not how it's yeah it's gotten so far off from that man it's everything's a secret and everything is happening here mm-hmm. you know on the phone too exactly but um, I'm just very blessed to be able to find what I have with her, and she is, she is, uh, she's been very supportive through some some of my hardest times of my life. Even though that's only been two years, we've gone through quite a bit together, and uh, that that right there is what proves what you have or yeah. what you don't have. A lot of people leave; they, they're when, gone when yeah. when shit gets tough, and and she's been there. She's been there, and she has. We we've proven to each other that our devotion. Yeah, I'm here no matter what. I'm right? here. I'm here. I'm yep. here no matter what. I've yep. got you. No matter how bad it gets, I've got you, and I'm right here with you. And when you when when you can't walk, I'll carry you. Yep. You need that. For people that don't haven't been there or had that kind of relationship, it's it's crazy the world of difference it makes. You know, I mean, as far that that could be the difference in you. You know reaching certain goals in your life that were never obtainable if you were with someone else, Mm -hmm. you know, because she's going to be there to push you or she's going to be your, you know, your biggest supporter as opposed to someone else could be your doubter. You know, she's my biggest inspiration. Yeah. Are your biggest inspiration? She has a work ethic about her that, uh, that has inspired me to even take on new looks at life, Mm -hmm. like interest in opening businesses, going back to college, just, just for something, just in, just, Having more of a positive attitude, even when it's hard to. Yeah, making a bigger uh, uh, influence on the mm-hmm. world, even right. 
mm-hmm. trying to look for the right word there. <laughs> you know, having a bigger influence, just influencing more people too. Right. You know, reaching out to more people. Yeah, dude. Um, I'm gonna switch it up. Uh, since yeah. it's still the beginning of the year, do you have any goals and resolutions that you set for yourself, or do you not do the whole resolution thing? I believe in goals. Yeah. I believe in setting a big goal. Um, but I also believe that getting to the big goal is setting your little micro goals. Yeah. Um, if you want to, if, if somebody was to ask me, how have I gotten this far? Mm-hmm. Um, my answer would be, I have failed my way to success. Uh, you just, you don't know the right steps. You just go and just you go this direction, right? Give up. So 2018's goal is to get myself situated properly i i you know i'll mention this um that i've had some hormonal issues mm-hmm. um that have made it difficult uh, i've gained a lot of weight from them uh i've had uh i've had some problems there that i've gained some weight from and so i want to get rid of that and get things situated there mm-hmm. and um really that's it for 2018 just continue on pushing um, I haven't really set too many goals for 2018. Just, just keep going. Get better, be better than I was yesterday. Yeah, and that's that's a thing too. Sometimes, man, you just gotta go. Period. Right? Mm-hmm. You just go. Get after it. I mean, I don't know what it is I'm I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna get up and I'm just gonna do something. I'm gonna go this direction because this right. is where my goal is. It might be. Miles and miles away, and I might be taking baby steps, but I'm going towards it, right? Nonstop. Yeah. I'm not turning around. I'm not I'm not backing down. Just getting after it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You don't always have to have a big goal ahead of you. Yeah. Sometimes the goal just has to be get through today, mm-hmm. get on to tomorrow, be better off than I was yesterday. And that is perfectly acceptable, in my opinion. Yeah. So what is uh I guess at the end of all of this what is your what is your end game man I mean as far as relationship fitness just life what it, where do you see yourself in a, the perfect world Oh man <laughs> I haven't really looked in the, looked at it in the perfect world view like um, like retired by the beach I mean what are you, what are you thinking the dots in <laughs> Well um if everything goes right, I retire in 18 years. I retire at 51 years old, and I'd like to – I'll probably – I'll do something else after that because 51 years old, I'll go nuts. You'll still be able to work, too. Yeah. You'll be perfectly but, capable. But I do plan on having all my vehicles paid off, my house paid off. Um, I am doing a lot with my retirement here in the next three years, uh, from three years on. As far as investing? Investing things, yeah. and stuff like that goes. And a lot of a lot of you people have to look at that. You know, especially don't, don't, don't wait for your social security, you know, to, and don't put faith into it. $500, you might get $500 a month to live off of. Yeah. You you worked all your life for that. Yeah. So, so, you know, investing my own money is one thing that I'm doing a lot of. So, uh, the end game with that is to be able to retire at 51 years old. And if I want to get a part-time job or a full-time job, I can. Door grader at Walmart. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, welcome to Walmart. Get your shit and get out. <laughs> yeah. Um sorry. It's important <laughs> it's Just, important to to be able to say this when you retire. And that is that I missed I missed baseball, softball games, I missed ballerina practices and and all that stuff with my children. Mm-hmm. I will not do that with my grandchildren. Mm-hmm. I am retired from the job that kept me from these situations. Uh I will not do that anymore. Let me know if I have a job when I come back, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I'm taking this day off. That type of financial security and yeah. freedom. It's freedom. And that's what it is. And I want that for Monica and I. Yeah. And and, and if you do pick up a part time job uh and, and you're well enough off on your retirement, it can be whatever you want. You know, you can actually do a job that's just super rewarding to you, whether it's just working with other people or hey, let's say you pick up a hobby from now in between then and you're like, Hey, I want this hobby to pay my bills, you know, or yeah. training people or or you know, helping a kid's thing, whatever, you know, like that's the awesome thing about when you get the financial freedom is you have like total freedom. You can do Mm -hmm. whatever you want. You do whatever you want. And that's, that's what you need to be at. Uh, I will say that, uh, I don't want to see snow again after 
every time. Man, yeah, you're gonna go I'll, south, right? Yeah, I plowed or, enough of it. Yeah, I've fought, I've I've fought the good storm enough. I'm I'm done. The only thing I want to push around is a sandy beach with my feet. I will say that I yeah, I would well, like that. That'd be awesome. Uh, so we're gonna close it out, dude. Uh, uh, was there any? If you could leave like one last piece of advice for anyone listening, do you have any like anything that stuck with you throughout your life? If you've caught one from someone you know, or a friend, or a family member that you could leave us to, or well, I have some phrases that I've always said. I say, "Don't bitch about something you're not willing to change." Yep. Um, here's a standard one everybody knows: never give up, never surrender. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, never give up. Don't quit. <laughs> never give up. Never give up on something unless it's no longer worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. There is no goal out there that is too big. Anybody who wants to sit down with me personally, I will tell you the foundations of uh, of of the of the topics that we have touched on. I can tell you how far I've come and what I've had to overcome, from family to school to financial bullying. I mean, bullying. I will tell you what I've gone through personally, so that you can see. Where see who I am today, and yeah. see, and be able to see that you can, you mm-hmm. can do it. You can change. You can get out of whatever you're at. Rather, if you're in drugs, rather if you've got addictions, rather if you're in a bad home, rather no matter what you're in, you have options, and the options start with willpower. How willing are you to get out of it? So be willing to get out of it. Be willing to change your situation. Be willing to put in the effort, yeah, and it's, you will get your results. I th- yeah, I think it all starts with the mental, right? I mean, it's all here. That's what's going to get mm-hmm. you moving. It's all in your head, and then you get that brain running right. Your body will follow. Yep, exactly, dude. Uh, if if anyone does want to reach out to you or get a hold of you, uh, do you have any? Drop them some social media handles or well, uh, Ryan Rogers. Um, that's R O G, not R O D G, on Facebook. Okay, and uh, get a hold of me. Um, I like to inspire. I hope that this helps someone. That someone can be, uh, someone can relate, and um, get a hold of me if you need me. Yeah, thanks, dude. That was awesome. All right, well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I'm uh, at Fit Farm Podcast on Instagram. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, we'll uh, we'll get out of here. Thanks guys. See ya.